Welcome back to an all new edition of the His and Her Money Show with America's number one money couple. I'm Tyler. And I'm Ty, and we're from hisandhermoney.com where we're managing money, marriage, and everything in between. We're so glad to have you guys back here with us for another great edition of the show because we got another awesome debt free story for you guys coming your way. We're going to be talking with a couple by the name of Samuel and Kirsty, and they're going to talk to us about how they were able to destroy. $50,000 yes. worth of debt. Absolutely. I absolutely love their story, and you're going to love it as well, too. So let's check it out. Hey, Samuel and Christy. Welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. Thank you for having us. Great to be here. We're, We're big excited. fans. We're excited awesome. to have you guys. We came across your story a few months ago, and we knew we had to get you guys on the show to share your incredible journey to debt freedom. But before we get into the details of your story, can you take a moment and introduce yourself to our audience and let them know what you're all about? Absolutely. Well, Samuel O'Banner um, and Kirsty O'Banner, and we're just, we just want to use our gifts and talents. We're definitely believers in Jesus Christ, and we want to use our gifts and talents to help as many people as we can. Awesome. Awesome. We love that. Yeah. We love that. So, at, awesome. <laughs> hey, love that. Um, as my husband mentioned, we first saw your story on Facebook. You all had a post, I guess, that went viral. And it was just so inspiring and encouraging to see because you all were holding up, I believe it was a sign that said how much debt that you all paid off, right? So can you tell our audience a little bit about the debt that you all had? How much was it and what did it consist of? Oh, I guess I should be the one to answer that. That's cool. <laughs> the debt that we had was a little over 50000 right. Um Technically, it was debt that I brought into our marriage. Mm -hmm. um, my husband had paid off his debt before we met. Um, so, again, the 50000 was debt that I had accumulated between student loans, um, my auto loan, um, medical bills, and that was the bulk of it. Mm -hmm. I was definitely the student loans, the, the car, and um, just some unpaid medical bills. Mm -hmm. So, we were looking at about 50000 Wow. Wow. Now, Samuel, you had you were in debt prior to marriage, but you paid it off, I'm assuming. Right. OK. Can you tell our audience a little bit about that? Well, absolutely. Well, I was the worst financially, primarily because growing up, just ignorant. Um, mm -hmm. My family, we, we just didn't handle money well. I watched my mom. I love my mom. And, and she's such a wonderful mother. Um, raised me single parent household, but just didn't teach me about finances. Mm -hmm. So I had to grow into my adulthood learning about money on my own really not learning because i screwed things up i had student loan i went to school to bethune cookman university in daytona beach mm -hmm. on a full academic scholarship and still ended up with student loans so wow. i don't know how that's how bad I, was. <laughs> <laughs> I took out a loan just to give you a brief story of how yeah. bad i was i was on a full academic scholarship i took out a loan my sophomore year for two thousand dollars to get clothing that, that i grew out of the next year i had a growth spurt in college <laughs> I've never heard of that before. <laughs> Someone taking out a student loan and did not even have need for it. Wow. wow. Cash advances, yeah. um, you name it, car notes, you name it. But in 2011, I got a hold of some, I just, I really, I was believing God to, to make me debt free. You know, I wanted to be debt free and I would go to church and, and give and think that it was just going to magically happen. And guess what? Nothing happened. <laughs> because right. my, beha my behavior stayed the same. Mm -hmm. So God allowed me to, in 2010, actually, January, um, I, 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 got, I reached a breaking point. My bank account was $753 overdrawn. Whoa. Wow. And, and I sat on my bed and I just was just, just look miserable. <laughs> And, and and then I began to go into the scriptures and God began to teach me about um, handling money, handling finances. And I was intentional. I contacted the collectors and became debt free in one year. I had fourteen thousand dollars in debt wow. and knocked it out in one year. Awesome. 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 Love that. Now, I think probably one of the most powerful aspects of this story, especially on this platform, is the fact that you had this moment where you. Your account is $700 overdrawn. You're fed up. You get to work and you get yourself out of debt. Then you fall in love. <laughs> and the woman that you fell in love with, you're happily married. And then, boom, we got new debt. And for a lot of people, they go at it as, well, that's your thing. Mm -hmm. You figure it out. You took the exact opposite approach. 
You said, I love you, Christy. This is not your debt. This is our debt, and we're going to work together to get out of debt. Talk about how you came to that conclusion and how that worked out for you guys. Well, I realized I did a little research and just and just speaking to anybody that's married, they always say that one of the number one causes of money fights and divor- uh, m- fights in marriage is money issues, mm-hmm. you know, just fighting over money, budgets mm-hmm. or whatever you call it. So I realized when I met Kirsty, we went on our first date and I tell you what, um, it was really special. I felt like she was being honest with me. And, you know, the, I was actually helping people in the community with their finances. So it, it just was weird how it was set up. I, I, we were progressing along very quickly. And I just began to ask the money questions, you know, and we began to have the conversations. I taught a class and then she was able to uh, engage with me in the conversations. And so I knew that if we were to get married, I was going to willingly inherit this debt because, you know, getting out of debt alone is cool, but doing it together, I felt like it would be even more beautiful. And so I was all, I never even thought about this is your debt, this is my debt. And the thought never even crossed my mind. Awesome. Chrissy, tell us, how did you feel about that when you heard him say that? You know what? I was actually surprised because he made a comment when we were dating. He said that he would not consider marrying someone unless they were on the same page financially. And when I heard that, I thought he was saying that I had to be debt free before he would consider marrying me. Because, again, he didn't have any debt when we met. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so I got to get to work. You know, I got a, a big hole to dig myself out of before we can get married is what I was thinking. So when he proposed four months after we met, I was completely shocked, completely wow. shocked. Because again, I was thinking that I was gonna, he was gonna wait until I had finished paying off my debt. So- We wouldn't be married. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would have still been working on it, I'm sure. But um, like he mentioned, when we were dating, like literally when we first met, he would happen to be um, starting a financial class that he was facilitating So he literally got the materials for me and we went through the class as he was facilitating it with the group that he was teaching. He would come over and we would go through the lesson together again. So I was going through the class and learning the principles and kind of really being exposed to the information as we were dating. So it started out like that. I love and that. I just thought it was beautiful. I was I was kind of shocked. Like, wow. OK, at first I was thinking, like, OK, should I be embarrassed about this? But he was so open about it and he was so gentle and he was just so um, just warm about it. Like, I didn't feel that like I had to hide it. I didn't feel like I had to be ashamed of it because he's very he's very open about his own struggles financially right. before he got a hold of those principles. So he made it easy for me. But I was surprised. Awesome. I will say that. That's awesome. Now, how long did it take you guys to pay off this fifty thousand dollars of debt? It took one year, 15, 15 months. months, 15 months, amazing. $15,000 in 15 months. That's amazing. That is amazing. So you guys came to the decision. This is our debt. We're going to work together. We're going to be a team. We're going to do this. Talk about the mental shift that you had to, I mean, cause that, that's a whole lot. First of all, uh, Samuel, you had to say, okay, I'm back in debt again. Kirsty, you have to say, I'm in debt and I'm ready to get out of debt. I mean, that's a whole lot of mind shifts happening. And you just got married. You got to figure out how to be husband and wife. Talk about all of yeah. the mental aspects that came along with this process. I have one word to describe how we did that. Because it is a lot, just like you mm-hmm. said. more than, And it was so many other things on top of that. But grace. Mm-hmm. The grace of God. Because, again... Mm-hmm. The every having to try to get accustomed to okay now I have to try to accommodate another person and he has to deal with me and I have to deal with him and we have to learn each other we have to figure out how to do this money stuff on top of everything else it was a lot right and I I honestly do not know how we did it and one I don't know <laughs> right no the grace definitely the grace of God I mean from from my perspective I know Kirsty has her own as well. One of the things for me is, you know, being single, debt free. I, you know, I like to buy clothes. I would go out and fashionable. That stuff had to stop. Yes. <laughs> you know, not totally stop buying clothing, but yeah. the type of clothing that I was buying and just going and spend just freely, it had I had to monitor that more closely now. So that was tough. But then also being a newlywed as a husband, you want to just shower your new your new bride and shower your wife and take her places. Knowing that we had this fifty thousand uh, dollar obstacle in front of us, I wasn't able to do. Th- I mean, we could have, but we would have been neglecting 
the, the, the debt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we had to make some sacrifices. And that was the part that was, you know, I wanted to buy her everything. She wanted new purses, whatever. But it was a sacrifice. But I knew if we stay focused, right. we would be able to do that. You know, the result, you know, would, would, would be beneficial. That's and, right. for me, and for me, the difference was um, being a person, obviously, I didn't handle money well at all either. Um, so, but I was also used to being independent. I was single. I was doing my own thing. So when we got together, it was a different adjustment, not being able to make purchasing decisions on my own, not being able to say, Hey, this is what we're in, what's in the account. My normal habit would be to say, Oh yeah, we've got it. We can go and do this. We can go and do that. But having to sit down and discuss those things, we really, at least myself, I was really forced to, um, Man, it was just a growing, a yeah. growing um, experience because I was like, okay, humbling and um, a growing experience because right. we had to learn how, I had to learn how to work together in that area, whereas I was used to just doing my thing, right. which was the wrong thing. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. We have a similar story as we well, too. So we know how that is. Yeah, same story. Absolutely. So you had to stop shopping or you could not shop as much. What were some of the other strategies that you guys put in place in order to knock this debt off? And I mean, 15, 50, yeah, 50, in 15 months. 15 months. I mean, y'all had to be eating ramen or something. Well, we, we did make a lot of sacrifices. I mean, Kirstie, I can t- we can just go on and on. But uh, one of the things we did, first of all, we budgeted. Mm-hmm. You know, we set a detailed budget each pay period. One of the things we did, we just tried to lower our expenses between our cell phones car insurance you know still have adequate coverage and things like that but we just try to lower our expenses everywhere we could save we were on it we were looking for savings anywhere we could the the grocery grocery store i ended up changing uh the store that i shop for groceries and literally cut our grocery budget in half right um you know obviously we we, throughout our marriage we started eating healthier and eating better which that can be expensive Mm -hmm. but just by making some adjustments as far as you know kind of having to be more strategic about where I shop and where I get these things as opposed to um, just kind of going for convenience, we were able to really save there. And just so many different things. One of the things that we talked about when we were um, just kind of talking about these things that we had to um, change and the adjustments and sacrifices that we had to make, we made a decision when we got married. This is our goal. It was our primary goal. Nothing was going to happen until we paid off this debt, period. So... We had to look at different things, whether it be a purchase or an event that someone was inviting us yeah. to or yeah. a trip. We we actually didn't take a honeymoon when we got married. Mm-hmm. And we, we literally made a decision to say, we're going to put that off for now because okay. we've got this debt now. So um, we had to literally look at every single thing and filter it through the lens of, is this going to help us towards our goal or is it going to hurt us? Right. And we had to just have that mindset and we were able to just be intentional and uh, intense and knock it out absolutely now for this journey that you guys went on I, i'm sure that there it wasn't smooth sailing all the time there had to be some obstacles that popped up along the way talk to us about some of those obstacles that came and how you all were able to overcome them man habits bad habits for me it was difficult breaking out of the what was normal for me you know even when we started budgeting my husband is so patient and he's so gracious and I just thank God for him. But it took me some time because I was like, okay, yeah, we'll budget. But then the next day I was doing other things and it took me a while to get out of that habit and really say, okay, this is, this is hurting us. And it's, is is making it more difficult. And I, in theory, I was like, yeah, I'm on board, but I had to really work at developing new habits, not just breaking bad habits, but developing new habits and disciplines and really sticking to and adhering to the budget that we agreed on. And I think just the tension itself, just, I know for me, sometimes I would just kind of snap and just be a jerk um, just because I was feeling a little stress, you know, from, you know, get that free and then now 50,000, you know, we said I do. And I'm like, okay, oh, now, <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody's congratulating after the reception, you know, we come home, I'm looking at the, the, the sheets and looking at the income and like, okay. We got a long journey ahead of us, you know, so it's just the stress of going to work every day and, and, um, and just try to keep a positive attitude and something, you know, but 
ultimately, Christy, she did fantastic. I mean, nobody's going to do something perfect. And I had my flaws as well. But ultimately, we were on one accord. Like she said, we were yeah. on the same page, which is what allowed us to do it so quickly. Now, I, Samuel, I want you to kind of speak to this, this situation because there's lots of spouses tuned in right now who are in your seat where they are trying to corral the situation, the financial situation. They're trying to get their spouse on board. And their spouse, like you said, Kirsty said that she didn't get it at first. Like it took, you know, there were some growing pains in there. But you were, she said, you were patient and you didn't give up. There's some spouses who are ready to give up because they don't see the change that they're necessarily looking for right away. And they're just like, they're, they're never going to get it. Let's, let's forget it. But you didn't do that. Talk to us about how you were able to stay patient, continue to give Kirsty grace and ultimately achieve the goal. Well, I think the grace comes from the fact that I, I understand and I'm learning every day the grace that God has extended to me. So who am I to get so impatient, not just with a friend, but with my wife, you know, and, and give up that quickly? And I just generally believe that I married a good woman, a woman who wanted to be debt free, a woman who wanted to grow spiritually with me and be with me, period. And so even in those difficult times, I just re reminded myself, you know, what, you got to you, you picked a good one. God blessed you. And so I wasn't, I'm not going to sit here and say it was all easy. There was tension, definitely. But I just kept my eyes on, I tried to, you know, through prayer, you know, keeping my eyes on, okay, I married a good woman. She wants to do this. Think she went most of her life living a certain way. I can't expect her to change overnight. Just like I lived my life a certain way before accepting Christ. He's patient with me. You know what I mean? And didn't expect me to change overnight. So I just try to keep that vertical relationship in line and help me with my relationship with my wife. Okay. Kirsty, now you and I are kindred spirits <laughs> in that I'm the one that brought all the debt into our marriage. And for me, it wasn't always easy. I was still learning and growing in the same way that you were speaking of. So in those moments of growing, there's usually growing pains. So as you were trying to get on board, get on track, get your wrap your mind around getting out of debt and changing your money habits, how were you able to not give up, to stay the course and ultimately become the debt destroyer that you are now? Man, you know what? I had to uh, similar similarly to what he's saying, obviously, on the other end of it, I knew that I had a good husband. I was still, like I mentioned before, blown away at the fact that he had even, even though it was difficult um, and it would be stressful at times, in my mind, I would think I had to sit back sometimes and say, okay, this man <laughs> took on this $50,000 and my crazy emotions and everything else that I am. Um, and I had to, I had to continue to think about that because he, he's just amazing. Like I tell people this all the time. Even when he's not sitting next to me, you know, he's I never once thought that I would end up with someone like him. So I was just I'm always just so grateful and so thankful. So I had to think about that a lot. Like, OK, yeah, this is difficult. Yeah, this is tough. And it's not really what I want to do at times. But just the gratitude that I have for the fact that he was riding with me, you know, and that he didn't, you know, run away from the situation. And I was just thinking about, OK. I need to make sure that I keep things where they need to be because, you know, I wanted to honor him and I wanted to show him that I was grateful and that I was appreciative of him for, for making the decision that he made. So I didn't want him to feel like I was just blowing it off. Like, Oh, it's no big deal. It's a big deal. Love that. Love that. So what were some of the important factors that help you all helped you guys stay motivated during this entire process? I think the small, small victories initially, like paying off some of the debt early on, some, some, you know, my wife was getting certain phone calls from debt collectors and just to just pay them off and say, Whew, I never have to hear from them ever again. You know, just the small victories and just building upon that was one of the things. This is, look, he literally used to say that. I never want them calling your phone again. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're never going to call your phone again. And I think he got so, I think he had so much pride as a husband right. knowing they're never going to call my wife's phone again. Like right. he was so, he was furious right. when he would know that those people were calling my phone. Can, and I thought that was hilarious. They can be so disrespectful sometimes. Yeah. And, and, you know, so I just wanted to get them out of, out of our lives forever. So that was very motivating, just seeing the victories. And I think when we would pay off a debt, if I remember correctly, we would sometimes treat ourselves to dinner and just, you know, do something nice. We would do something nice. Certain milestones. Like you know? when we knew that we were going to be paying off a certain account or something right. that we had yes. 
plan for that particular pay period to pay off, we will also make sure that we budget it for, you know, a night to go out or right. something that we wanted to do for ourselves just to kind of treat ourselves for the work that we were doing. Yeah. And I think um, just to answer that question from my perspective, another thing that really kept us motivated was the idea and the understanding that we both were coming into and have come into and are still continuing to understand um, just the concept of the stewardship. Right. Mm -hmm. The fact that this is not our money, yes, you know, right. and I went through so, so much of my life thinking that, oh, this is mine. I work for it. I can do whatever I want. But the reality is it all belongs to the Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's his, you know, so who are we to take what he's given us and squander it? Right. You know, so that kept us motivated as well. Looking at it like, okay, we are stewards. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to be um, good stewards and we have to make sure that we're doing what we should with what he's entrusted to us. So Amen. that was a big motivating factor as well. Right. Understanding that we had to give an account for this money. That's right. You right. know, right. absolutely. That's right. Now, what particular uh, debt payment method did you guys use? Was it the debt snowball or did you pay the debt that had the highest interest rate? off first was there a particular method that you all used we followed the snowball method okay. uh it just worked for us because again with the smaller victories knocking those out of the way and just uh getting that momentum going mm -hmm. that was very beneficial to give us that motivation to keep going and then i could show kirsty and you know because i had done it before and so that was another reason why i had the hope and the, the, to keep, keep going because i said this can be done and so that we did do the snowball method. Cool. Cool. Now, what type of impact did this whole journey of getting out of debt have on your marriage? You know what? To be honest with you, and I, hey, I, I feel confident in saying this. Mm -hmm. I feel like we could do anything. Like I, I literally feel like we could do anything that we agree on and we set our minds to. I feel like we could do it because right. this was it was difficult and it was a it was a big feat. And we were able to work together. And I think it showed me that I have somebody that I, that's on my team that's going to ride for me and vice versa. And we could do anything. Right. No, I feel the same way. The, the communication. We can talk about talk about the finances. You know, one of the tougher issues. I think that money, even the Bible, it talks about money and the heart. It's so related, connected to our hearts. And so we would have those in-depth conversations about it. And so uh, and be on the same page. So I think it was very beneficial uh, for our communication. So talk us through the moment when you all paid off your last debt. Right. Whew. That was a special day. That was December 31st, 2015. The last day of the year. Oh, wow. Last day of the year. Nice. It was. It just worked out perfectly. So it was I took, crazy how it worked out. The last debt was Sally Mae. No, not that, Sally Mae. It was, it? was um, Great, Great Lakes. Lakes. It was a student loan. It was a student loan. Mm -hmm. And so we get up that morning. We both had to go to work. It was a weekday. And so we... We, I set it up on the, the online system and Kirsty hit the sin. I told her to hit sin to make the final payment. So she hit it. We said a prayer. We rejoiced a little bit. And then I said, well, let's take a picture and share it with our friends online. And so we went in our living room and we wrote down the amount we paid, $50,531 or whatever it was. And we just snapped a little quick photo. And from there, things just got crazy. We, we By the time we got to work, we both worked relatively close to well really close to home right. actually literally by the time we made it to work our phones were just going, going crazy and i'm like what is going on i felt like soon as from, from the time we took that picture to the time i walked to the car to go to work i was late for work that day there was like 500 likes already wow. it was crazy it was it was literally crazy so we're going throughout the day we're getting inbox messages it was just flooded. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. And I'm just like, you have to be kidding me. The post wow. went viral. Eventually, 180 plus thousand uh, people liked the message. We got hundreds of inbox messages. And it just went crazy from that point. Probably thousands. Probably I, thousand. still, I still have hundreds <laughs> wow. of inbox messages that, that I have it. not <laughs> on read. <laughs> And I just, I can't do it. I cannot yes. bring myself to open all of them. I just can't. We didn't, you can't plan that. We just took a yeah. picture and just share like we normally do. And I guess it related to people because I shared a little bit about embracing my wife's debt and making it ours. And, and it just related to people and they were inspired. So that was pretty cool. That's awesome. So how does life feel now that you all are debt free compared to when you guys were deep in debt? I think we got a good rhythm. I mean, it was it was really exciting at first, 
now I think, and, and Chris speaks for you. So I mean, it's it, we, we got a. I think we got a solid rhythm. We're still budgeting. We're, we're on a, on a goal of now of purchasing our, our first home, and so we're still budgeting. It's not as tight as it was at all. And we still, we, we like I said, we just went to Chicago last week or on the weekend of the Fourth of July. We're doing some traveling. But I mean, that's how I feel. I think it's it's loosened up a little bit. Like we're able to do a few things that we wanted to do. You know, right. um, for me, especially being newlyweds, like I wanted us to travel. I wanted to do these different things, and obviously, because of the goal that we had and the debt that we had, we weren't able to do that. So now it feels great to be able to do a few things. Obviously, we're still budgeting for you know whatever it is that we do, right. and we're still making sure that we budget. You know, we budget biweekly. And we're still, you know, operating in the same way. And it's not like we're just spending everything we have because, like he mentioned, right. we are throwing a, a big chunk of our income at um, saving for yeah, our right. home. So right. to a degree, we're still, it's almost the same, but it is a little more liberating. And it's, right. it's we're a little more, we have a little more freedom in, I'm in not the budget. I'm not stressed out how it was. Right. <laughs> and it's, it shows so much in his demeanor and his right. his attitude and his whole posture because he obviously he has a heart to provide like he he he's all about providing and making sure that i have what i need and that we're okay so i think he really took that so yeah. seriously that it would just like it changed his whole personality and it was funny because he used to say you're going to see me be a totally different me you know once we pay off this debt and i'm like okay whatever <laughs> But he was so right now he's always joking and being silly like yeah. i can't stop getting him to I can't get him to stop joking. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, like some days I should go back yeah, to right. that, that. That weighs you down. It does. Man. It does. <laughs> it does. It weighs you down. So, yeah. It does. So what is the biggest life lesson that you've learned during this entire journey? Can I? Can yeah, I, yeah, go ahead. Man, you have to trust God. You have to trust God, not only trusting him to do certain things, but you have to trust what he said. We have to trust his word because what he said and how he said to do different things, it works. And this was just like a huge example of that. You know, he's outlined in his word how we should handle our finances. And when we do it, the way that he said is going to work. No ifs, ands or buts about it. And we can try to deviate from it or do what we think is best or whatever the case. But what he said works. And it just really helped me to um really understand even more so that we can trust him we can trust what he said we can trust his word and it's not going to return void and i'm just i'm really grateful for that particular lesson oh uh, that's 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 right and and the thing for me is you know faith without works is dead you know like i said before for years i would pray god i want to be debt free help me to be debt free and but i didn't put any works with that it was just lip service i was just talking but then as he began to reveal to me the principles and i began to take action so mm -hmm. i had the faith i believed in him that he could do it and use me to do it and then i took the action and then that's when i accomplished the goal and then it just trickles over to every area of life mm -hmm. Now, we're big on educating, self-educating, and getting smarter. We tell our audience to do that all the time. It was such a key element in our personal story of getting out of debt. So, do you guys have some book recommendations for the people tuned in to the show that are desiring to get to the place where you all are? Absolutely. First and foremost, we say the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible. <laughs> um, Proverbs... Proverbs is a great start. The um, book of wisdom. The book of wisdom. You know, um, that's the great start because ultimately that's what our motivation was, you know, and is um, in setting these goals. And also, I got to shout out uh, Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover. Incredible book that really is just awesome. There's another book, Thou Shalt Prosper by Daniel Lappin, Rabbi D Daniel Lappin. And then... You know what? I hadn't checked it out yet, but I'm going to you all's new book. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I just saw it on the website yes. yesterday. But like I said, we're fans. We've seen your videos before. And we're fans. Awesome. And we're surprised that you guys reached out to us. And uh, I definitely want to check out you all's new book. I wish I could turn this camera around and show you guys his bookshelf. Mm -hmm. He's a big reader. Yeah. Like, I can't even, like, he has a ton of books. That's good. So when he say he's going to read that book, uh, he will. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So to somebody who's tuned in right now, who heard it. your story, inspired, they're like, man, that is awesome. But then they're like, 
I don't think I can do that. My situation has this factor or that factor. I don't know if I have what it takes to get out of debt. What words of encouragement can you offer to that person right now? Right. You have to first believe that you can do it. You got to believe that you can do it. Um, and I know Kirsty has a, she's very motivational as well. <laughs> um, but um, you got to believe that you can do it because that's the start. And then you, you got people like yourselves, you know, Talent and Ty, they know your story. And then hearing us, there are people out here doing it. That's right. you know, single and married. And so believe that you can do it and just take the steps. Take the steps, you know, you know. Pray, you know, if you're a believer, pray. Talk to God. Ask Him for guidance. Take steps every day so you make progress. But don't lose hope. And if, and another thing, um, like what you were mentioning uh, before, Tyler, about education. It really starts with under, having a, an understanding and knowing um, what to do and what not to do. Because I think that's where we fall into those pits because we don't know what to do and we don't know what we shouldn't be doing. So I think for me, that was the big thing, like understanding these principles and learning, learning. I had to learn how to handle money. As long as I had been handling money, I had to learn how I should be handling money at 26 years old. Mm -hmm. So, um, definitely education, educating ourselves. There's, we live in an age that's just, everything is at our fingertips. We have the internet, we have, you know, obviously you folks are doing an amazing job at putting these resources right. out um, and making sure that people have the information and they have, um, other people have done the legwork. So now we have it easy. You know, we can just go and pick up a book. Whereas, you know, you folks and other individuals have probably put hours and, and, and maybe even years mm -hmm. into creating that resource and we can just go pick it up and read it in a few days. So definitely being intentional about getting the information that you need because it's not an excuse because right. it's out there. Right. We have to go and get it and educate ourselves. Right. Absolutely. So please tell our audience more about the services that you offer and how they can stay connected to you guys. Right. Well, uh, after the Facebook post went viral, we saw that there was a great need uh, for this information. And we were already helping people in the community, but we just wanted to make something formal. So we started Fresh Start Financial Education, LLC, where we help people teach them about finances and, and, and personal finances and help them get out of debt and just manage their financial situation. So um, we can be found. We have a Facebook page at Fresh Start Financial Education. Um, also, uh, Will help me. My mind. Oh, your mind. <laughs> My mind. Um, um, well, what we've been doing, which has been really, really great, um, we've been offering um, virtual consultations. Right. So we have clients, we have people that will call us, and we do a, something similar to what we're doing now. And we, we talk through uh, their situation, we answer questions, and we email them a complete recommendation analysis of what they're doing and right. try to help people learn how to budget, which we think is so crucial. Um, help people develop a plan because that's, I think where a lot of people get hung up. They don't know where to start. They don't know what to do. Right. So we've been uh, really helping a lot of people from all over the country. It's been just crazy and the then, response that we got as far as that goes. It was crazy. Like within the first week we had that literally, I tell you no lie, 9,000 subscribers to our mailing wow. list. Wow. The first week, because mm -hmm. people are so hungry for the information, in particular in the African American community, yeah. and that's the beauty. That's where our passion, that's where our heart is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also do workshops as well, uh, where we set up workshops and that go on for several weeks and help people with their finances. But our email address is Samuel and Kirsty A N D Kirsty at Fresh Start Financial Education dot com. Awesome. So, can you just say that website again, where you where they can find out all this information? Well, the website, we're working on finishing up the website, okay. but uh, we have, we're have we on Facebook with okay. the Fresh Start Financial Education. And then our email is Samuel and Kirsty, and spell out A N D, Kirsty okay. at Fresh Start Financial Education.com. Perfect. Yeah, we'll, we'll be, okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no go I, ahead. Was just, I was just going to say um, we finish up the website. When we get that finalized, we'll definitely be posting it on the Facebook page. Right. Perfect. Um, we have, right. Don't we have a YouTube channel? YouTube channel as well. <laughs> Awesome. So we'll make sure that we have all of those links in the show notes for sure. Just head over to hisandhermoney.com at the conclusion of this show and look for Samuel and Kirsty's interview and you will find direct links to contact them and you can get a fresh start with your family. Love it. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Samuel and Kirsty, we really appreciate you guys coming on the show, sharing your story. It is so encouraging it is. to know that you guys started 
from $50,000 in the red to totally debt free. And now people are encouraged to know that they can do it too. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the show. Today. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. You, you guys are awesome. Us. You guys do what you're doing as well. I was going to say the same thing. Thank you. It's incredible. We appreciate you. Wow, man. Now that that's love right that's there. Love. Okay. Samuel was debt free in his singleness. You're right. Then got married. And inherited debt. And inherited Sounds debt. Sounds like someone you wow, know. Wow, what a credible story that is. Wow. Sounds very familiar. <laughs> but it's just amazing how they came together. I mean, because yeah. that took a lot of sacrifices on Absolutely. both parts. Both parts to say, okay, let's come together. Let's make this happen. And because they chose that, because they decided to do it together, they were able to win. And they are now debt free and helping others right. to become debt free as well. So what's it going to take for you? What's it going to take for you to come together with your spouse or for you and your singleness to get some accountability together and say, I'm going to do whatever it takes to become debt free? That's right. Well, we want to help you. We have an absolutely free resource, a free book just for you called Eight Essential Steps to Getting Out of Debt. All you have to do is go to hisandhermoney.com forward slash eight steps. That's the number eight. We'll also have the link in the description box below. If you guys enjoyed this episode of the His and Her Money Show, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget, check us out over at our website at hisandhermoney.com. And if you know somebody who could use some motivation to get it together and to get out of debt, send them this video, email it, Facebook it, tweet it, send it out however you need to get the word out that debt freedom can be a reality. Well, that does it for this time. It's been great. Until next time. Peace. Bye.